Welcome to Fan Counters. My name's Nick, and Elizabeth is not here. She is on vacation at Walt Disney World, Florida, so I'm here in the studio all by myself, but that'll change in just a little bit. We've got a wonderful guest with us that kind of piggybacks off of who we had last week. If you remember, last week we had Kristen McQuaid, who is a choreographer and all worked on the show Dance Moms. Well, this week on the show, we have a Dance Mom dancer. Ava Kota is here. She's going to talk to us all about her wonderful rising career, all because of her skills in the dance studio. And, uh, of course, she's got wonderful acting abilities, modeling ability, and, and I'll talk about her in just a little bit. But first, I want to start out by wishing you a happy 4th of July. A couple days ago, the nation celebrated its birthday, and I uh, hope you had a good, safe holiday. We went to uh, see Steven Tyler at Milwaukee's Summerfest on Tuesday. My wife and I had a great time. Steven Tyler is one of those performers that is amazing to see on stage. He's sort of, I want to say he's flamboyant in his performance because he's always entertaining. Everything he's doing is entertaining. He had a lot of sound issues, so it was funny. You spent a lot of time over at the soundboard, uh, you know, trying to figure all that out, and he was making comments to them and about the fact that you know, the sound wasn't just right, but uh, in the audience, we couldn't tell. Uh, opening up for Steven Tyler was a group called the Sisterhood Band. Never heard of them before. Eight songs into the performance, they come to tell the audience that they have grown up in a musical family. And immediately I thought, yeah, yeah, who hasn't grown up in a musical family that is now a musician? Well, they have an interesting story to tell these two women who are in the Sisterhood Band because they are Alyssa whose mom was the lead singer in the country group Bailey and the Boys back in the 90s and 80s, I guess. But more uh, shocking to me, I must say, would be the other singer, whose name was Ruby Stewart, daughter of Rod Stewart. And Alyssa and Ruby are now in a band called the Sisterhood Band. And after the show, we got a chance to meet them and talk to them. In fact, I'm going to post that photo on the Instagram page and the Twitter. You can post a picture on a Twitter, right? Well, we're going to find out. I will post it for you so you can see it. Uh, but Ruby and Alyssa met me backstage, and we talked a little bit about getting them on the program. So hopefully we'll have them uh, in the coming weeks or months or however long it takes. Sometimes these things take longer than they should. Uh, but anyway, had a great time. If you haven't been to Milwaukee Summerfest, it's the world's largest music festival. Uh, if you want to know, Steven Tyler was on a free stage. All you had to do is pay the $20 admission, and his concert was included with that ticket. Uh, so that was pretty uh, pretty awesome. So if you're in Milwaukee in June, late June, early July, always over the 4th of July, check out Summerfest. Uh, on the show today, I mentioned Ava Coda. She is going to be uh, with us in just a moment. She's a dancer, a vocalist, a model, and an actress. Ava has a strong training background in contemporary ballet, point, jazz, and tap dance. She's also known for her reoccurring appearances on Dance Mom, season four and five. She also appeared on So You Think You Can Dance, where she spoke very honestly about the effect of social media bullying. Ava is very passionate about using her celebrity status to bring more awareness to bullying. And we're going to talk about that very topic on the show today. So in just a couple minutes, we'll talk with Ava. I want to bring you up to date on what's going on next week. We've got an amazing guest with us. Lexi DiBendetto is going to be with us. And if you don't know why her name might sound familiar, I'll tell you. She was on Grey's Anatomy, and she's now starring on the hit Nickelodeon show, Night Squad. And next week, Lexi is going to be here talking to us about her experience on that show. We also get into a lot of other topics that you won't want to miss. Lexi DiBendetto is going to be on the show next week. So here we go. The show for today, Friday, July 6th. This is Ava Coda. Coming to you from nowhere near the entertainment capital of the world. This is Fan Counters with Nick and Elizabeth on the Podfix Network. There was this mob of people and they're screaming my name. Crazy fans. Stop following me. Don't come around my house. If you do, the cops are going to be at yours. If I'm having dinner with my wife, don't sit down at my table. Don't follow me into the bathroom. I continually will get stopped. Can I take a picture? We're gonna, oh my God. I think this guy wants to fight me. Ended up being a fan. I'm the only one that's ever been on Sam Jackson and lived to tell about it. <laughs> that's why we call it Fan Counters. I don't think you're going to last on the air very long. <laughs> yeah. Ava, welcome to Fan Counters. We're happy you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You really bet. Excited. Well, good. Now we just celebrated the Fourth of July. Uh, I yes. did. You have any big plans? Did you do anything fun? 
Yeah, actually, um, the fourth is my brother's birthday. So, and it was his twenty first. When he was younger, he used to think all the fireworks were all for him. <laughs> <laughs> Rude awakening, you know. So it was a fun one. We went out to dinner and watched fireworks and all that stuff. So it was a really great day. That's awesome. And now last yeah. week on the show, we had Kristen McQuaid here. and Yes, I it, love Kristen. It looks like uh, just recently you attended a dance video premiere party for, and I'm not, I might get the song name wrong. Is it called Florets? Yes, Florets. Oh, Florets, yes. okay. Inspired by Grace Vanderwall's yes. original song. So talk a little bit about mm-hmm. that event and your experiences with Kristen. Yeah, it was so much fun. I mean, I've known Kristen for a really long time, and we were actually the ones who, oh, my mom and I, the one, um, the ones who brought her on Dance Moms. And so she did the choreography, um, or my mom and her did the choreography for our group, and um, I've known her for a while. And then I was able to do Moonlight, which is her last Grace Vanderwall video. Um, so I was really excited to see this one. Her visions are always amazing, and she's very artistic. And this video, I don't know if you've seen it, but it was absolutely amazing, just Oh, stunning. Yeah. So I was really excited and the event was great. And it was good to see her because she's bouncing all over the place now. <laughs> I know. We actually had trouble connecting she's with her everywhere. originally because she had I to really? catch flights and different things were happening. But yeah, we right. fin- finally got yes, her. Yes, I know. It's crazy. She just needs to move to L.A. <laughs> right. <laughs> she she looks like she already belongs thing. there, though. She's there enough. Oh, for sure. For sure. So I mentioned, the looks. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned in the opening at this point, fans of Dance Moms probably know you best from that show. Talk to us a little bit about how that opportunity unfolded for you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really crazy to think about. It was so sudden. Um, but I was a huge fan. Um, at 10 years old, uh, my mom and I decided that we were going to drive to Pittsburgh and audition for um, Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, which was Abby's other show. Right. And so we were there, and I was so excited. I was, like, just excited to meet the girls. And I ended up making it um, to the top two um, left in that audition, and it was for Dance Moms, which we weren't even expecting to be on. Um, so then we shot a couple episodes there, and then, you know, it was just kind of a journey of being on her team and going and learning new things that she wanted me to get, and then, you know, competing against her by the end. Um, but it was really an amazing experience, and um, a lot of my friendships now that I have are from the show. So, but not to say that wasn't crazy. It was. It was really stressful and really dramatic, but it was all worth it in the end, for sure. Well, Kristen did share some insights about her experience with Abby and and that kind of thing. And I'll only mention Mm -hmm. this last time to tell her that, you know, tell you that we gained some more perspective on the girls of the show because, you know, there's no doubt that Abby did things that were over the top and maybe just for the cameras, but still those verbal, and I don't know if you want to call them attacks or whatever, but at the kids, as a child, I could think that that would just break you a little bit. Definitely, it, it was really hard. But um, I mean, every dance teacher is critical. She just took it to a whole nother level. But, um, you know, I think all of us came out of it as such, you know, strong people. And honestly, we can take on anyone now, like literally anyone. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of cool. You know, we definitely grew from it. Was it really necessary? Um, probably not. But um, I mean, I think that it was definitely entertaining for viewers. I found it interesting that you just um, said that you had actually auditioned for her other show, but ended up on Dance Mom. So when you got offered that role, did you and your mom talk about like what you were going to get into in advance to kind of maybe mentally prepare what you were heading into? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we um, we were we loved her competition show. So we were like, that is the perfect thing for me. And then we kind of got thrown into the whole Dance Moms thing. And my mom was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to argue with all these seasoned moms. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And um, it was it was crazy. I remember one of the first times we walked into the dressing room with them. And my mom was just so overwhelmed that – and she's never – like, she's a very strong person and, like, has a very strong personality – And she was like speechless. She's like, I don't even know what to say. They're telling me to say things. So it was just um, something that we were definitely thrown into and had no time to prepare whatsoever. Um, But we got a little bit better at it, you know, as we got along in the next season. So that was good. Now, I work very close with a lot of dance studios here in Wisconsin. I make a lot of dance videos and that kind of thing. So I get a chance to talk to the owners about the image that Dance Moms has, and, and so many people mm-hmm. have negative images because they don't want people coming to their studio to think that that kind of stuff goes on there. And I know that your mom right. has a studio. So when that show first started, did your mom have to address that stuff with the parents? And then when you went on that show, 
I don't know if your mom still had the studio at that time, but was that an ongoing kind of yes, conversation yes. at her studio? Um, I mean, I, I think the thing that um, was really good, um, especially when we talked to the producers and the way um, that we were on the show, I think my mom and I were very um, positive and strong-willed. We never were those people who were attacking kids or attacking this. So I think that our identities were really strong in the show, that the people at our studio didn't really question, question our ways. Um, but definitely, I mean, the show does have a negative impact um, in some ways, for sure, on what Abby has said and the arguments, it's taken over the top sometimes. Um, but really, it wasn't a problem with my mom. Um, and if anything happened, she just shut it down anyway. So that's an yeah. awesome mom. She's, for... she's pretty awesome. Yeah, she's great. Well, and that's, and that's a great thing to have your parent watch out for you instead of just throwing you to the wolves and kind of be like, you know, we all know this is for television. You know, we get it. It's uh, right. hyped up and that kind of stuff. But still, you know, we're all about protecting the kids. <laughs> right, yeah. She's always always been there for me, which is amazing. So you're close with the girls that you dance with on the show, right? Yes, I am. Actually, Mia is like one of my best friends now. <laughs> okay, and besides the stuff with Kristen, have you thought about doing any sort of collaborations with them in the future? Maybe either on social media videos or anything like that? Oh, for sure. I mean, Nia and I, um, actually, Nia, Bryce, and I did a YouTube video a little bit ago, which was like their boyfriend tag, um, boyfriend girlfriend tag. It's hilarious. Um, but yeah, Nia and I, we love to dance together. We go take classes together and stuff. But we've actually talked about doing um, some singing stuff together recently. So um, yeah, and we have something coming up that's kind of exciting that we were um, fortunate to be on together without even like, planning it um but that will be coming out soon but i can't really say anything about it so. that's okay that's a tele you know, the television project but it's is it for tv can you say um it's yeah. for something okay yeah. that's okay uh you moved to la a little <laughs> over a year ago right two years ago oh is it two yeah, years ago now crazy. okay are you dancing with the studio flies. there um i am not really with a competitive studio i train at um edge performing arts center a lot in millennium and then i do train at burbank dance academy which is a competition studio, but I'm just not with their team. Um, but I've just really been working on, you know, working on my artistry and my technique and training. And um, I get to perform at other events, which is kind of cool. So um, competitions don't really, I don't really do those anymore. Okay. <laughs> we did enough. so many on the show. I was like, I think I got enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, right? I mean, a new one. Right. It, it, it's really crazy. And that's what people say that, um, you know, they were blown away that we learned dances in like a week. But honestly, it was like three days. And if you had a solo, you learned that in like maybe a day. It was intense. So. I'm, al I'm always blown away that dancers can learn the choreography to multiple dances, perform them at the same day, and not get them mixed up. Yeah. See, I, I'm honestly blown away, too. I really don't know how, how we make it happen. But um, <laughs> I think we just go with the flow and just hope it works. <laughs> Repetition, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Does your mom still own that dance studio back in Michigan? Um, she doesn't. Since we moved, um, it was just too hard. We were literally like three thousand miles away because we were from Michigan, so it was Michigan and California. Um, and she just couldn't run it the way that she wanted to, into the caliber she wanted. So, um, we actually had to close the doors, um, this past year. So last year was our first year not having it. But she had it for fourteen years. That's so. a long time. Quite a long time. Yeah. Now you've mentioned where over and over. Up. Yeah. Where you grew up in Michigan. Uh, like, is that Detroit area or? Um, it's like Ann Arbor area. We're okay. like an hour from Detroit. Okay. If I had my hands, I could show you right now. Yes. You know, in Michigan the mittens, is. But... Yep. Mm -hmm. But see, <laughs> from Wisconsin, we always say that we're the hand because if you hold out your right hand, we got that little thumb part is our Door County area. So uh, we claim oh, the hand too, there you go. just so you know. Oh, well, it's very convenient, I have to say. <laughs> right. It's quite nice. We live right <laughs> like here. Like I'm from here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> uh, you mentioned over and over that your mom's okay. your biggest inspiration. Uh, would love to hear a little bit about how she's shaped you into the person that you've become in your life so far. Um, yeah, I mean, she is absolutely amazing. The most amazing human being I know. Um, yeah, she has not only been my teacher in dance, but really, obviously, my teacher in life. She's taught me so much. Um and she really has been my number one supporter since the beginning. And I have gone through, you know, some hard stuff with family and, you know, accepting me wanting to go into the entertainment industry and pushing it full force. And she's just been there for me, um, 
like I couldn't even expect. So um, she moved out here, uplifted her life, right. and came out to L.A. and literally lived in a one-bedroom apartment like she was a like in college. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. um, lived like that with me. So um, I cannot thank her enough. And every single day she is, you know, giving me life lessons on, um, you know, whether it's just street smarts or it's, um, you know, just being a good human and being a good person. And um, I really wouldn't be the person I am without her. So, and I wouldn't really be alive without her either. So, um, well, of course. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, she's honestly, she's amazing. And the way that she, um, you know, with the studio, I just grew up watching her, you know, pretty much adopt all of these kids and, you know, do the same with them and really guide them and give them advice. She's just a really, really giving and amazing person. So, so you've been in L.A. a couple of yeah. years now that you mentioned. Uh, what, is, what does your mom yes. do? Is she working or is she managing your career full time? Oh, of course she is managing my career. I don't even I have a manager, but she's still my momager. Um, yeah, but she um, also does runway coaching and we um, travel and do master classes and teach and do choreography together. Actually, one of our routines that we choreographed this past year just won nationals. So we're super excited about that. Um, so that's kind of something fun that we're doing. Um, and she's been doing this little styling out here and set designing and that kind of stuff, just trying to find her little niche out here. But she's so busy with being my Uber driver and personal cook <laughs> and assistance and everything else that it makes it a little difficult <laughs> that's funny now you mentioned yeah, coaching literally. that she does um you just participated in your second la fashion week and uh with your i think oh i think that was my well for counting seasons well probably third or fourth year oh okay la fashion week it's crazy that is no third crazy. year yeah because i my first one was when i was 13 insane Wow. So, See, yeah. a lot of my research, it's I'm just crazy. a year behind. You know, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, no, you're all good. You're all good. <laughs> <laughs> so with your height, your long legs, modeling kind of seems like an obvious endeavor that you really should be pursuing. Have you done more training to acquire the skills to be a model? Or which direction are you going with that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great being around tall people when I'm modeling. It's honestly like one of the best feelings ever. Um, and to be able to wear heels and feel comfortable is great. Um, yeah, but my mom grew up modeling and she actually traveled to um, Milan in Europe and was a very seasoned model in her days. Um, so she has coached me since I was um, young. And so she has kind of been that runway model coach um, from the beginning. But honestly, with modeling your biggest thing is just doing photo shoots and getting that experience and knowing your angles. And um, honestly, I think just being someone really good to work with because sometimes that is difficult to find um, in the modeling industry. And so, you know, just being, having good set etiquette and that kind of stuff really gets you far, but I absolutely love it. It's so much fun. And wearing all those amazing clothes. I, mean, like, oh, it's, I wore um, like a $30,000 dress one time. Whoa. It's like, what? In the world, it's very nerve wracking, but it was. I was amazing. like, weren't you scared? So like, hopefully, nothing falls off of it. Uh, everything is right? the same no, condition. Right, no, because normally, like, the price tags are not on it, but this one just kind of like slipped out, and I was like, wait, does that say three? Oh, wait, thirty thousand. <laughs> and then it, yeah, it gets you worried just a little bit. So I was like, okay, <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing. So it's crazy what things like that cost. No kidding. Oh my gosh. So what are some yeah, of your goals? As far as modeling goes, what, where would you like to see that part of your career go? Well, um, I'm hoping that because I'm getting a little bit older, the New York market has been difficult um, with, you know, being young. Um, so I'm hoping that in these next couple of years, I can um, go and do the New York Fashion Week and really hit that with the big, um, the really big shows um, and the huge designers like Versace and um Tommy Hilfiger and all of those stuff, because that is literally a dream of mine. But one of my biggest dreams, which obviously when I get older is to become a Victoria's Secret model. Um, Cause that's just like the tip of the iceberg. That's just like what every single model wants to get. So um, that would be like my thing. If I do that, then yes, my modeling career is complete. <laughs> so if we see you on that television fashion show, we know that your dreams have really come true. <laughs> right. Yes. So, you know, you mentioned set etiquette and all that. I don't see it from this conversation you being very hard to work with. So that's really a plus. I'm sure that goes in your favor. 
Um, Thank you. Thank you. And it also appears you've kind of slowly and quietly been perfecting your abilities before telling the world about them. So I want to know a little bit more about the singing and songwriting goals you have. Uh, you've been working on an acoustic pop sound uh, that that's self-described. So tell us a little bit about where your yeah. music's at. Yeah, so um, I'm really excited. I'm going to be coming out with quite a bit of music um, pretty soon. And I wrote it all myself, which is, this is kind of like my first, um, you know, singer-songwriting journey and working with a producer and really, you know, taking it from nothing to this whole produced song that could possibly be on the radio. So it's honestly just been an amazing journey. And it's, um, all of the songs are very, very personal and kind of about something that I have gone through in the past couple of years and um, what I've learned. And so I'm really excited for everybody to hear it. I hope they like it. Um, but I am really in love with them. So I guess that's really what matters. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for everybody to hear it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just crazy. I can't even believe that I'm coming out with my own music. <laughs> and do you know when that's coming out? Um, we don't have a set date yet, but honestly, probably in the next couple of months, I will release my first single. So, And there's quite a few to come. So, Do you have a songwriting process, or do you just kind of write something when it pops in your head? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just discovered probably in the past year that I was able to write songs. And really what happened was I was just overflowing with these emotions because something had just happened and I was like okay I just need to write something down and so I was like you know what I'm just gonna write a song I'm just gonna do it and it might help um you know me just decompress and try to get it out and um so I just started writing down lyrics and I actually put it together and I was like wow okay this kind of sounds good and then I think or I showed my mom and she started like tearing up she was like I didn't even know that this was a thing so um it's really been a cool journey of me finding myself and finding my voice and being able to have this outlet of when I am just over, you know, I have so many emotions going on and I don't know what to do. So it's kind of this new thing that I felt to, you know, kind of free myself. So very cool. Do you play guitar or piano or, or something that you're composing uh, with? I don't. I wish I did so bad. I want to learn piano. That's like one of my goals this summer is to learn piano. Um, I don't. So, but I actually have a good um, way of like putting melody into my lyrics so I can write a song and, and write a melody also with it. Um, and then my producer can kind of work with that. So, so the yeah. lyrics always come first though. Melody is kind of a uh, after, or you get help with that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of um, the melody and I mean, sometimes he would send me a track and I'd put my lyrics to the track. Um, but most of the time I um, would just, kind of write a whole bunch of words on a piece of paper and then kind of sort them out and then create a melody to it to where that I can make sure that every word goes together and it makes sense. Um, so, yeah. But honestly, it seems like a huge process, but I have, like, my best songs, I write, like, super fast, like, a half an hour at a time and a song is done. Wow. <laughs> so it, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's just... Everybody, a lot of like the big singers or whatever, they say, you know, the same thing. It just kind of comes and you just need to get it out. It's, it's really kind of crazy. Now, you've already, we've talked about the one television show you've already been on, but you've been on another one. Yes. So you think you can dance. Yeah. And you had a so beautiful, you, think you, can dance. you had a beautiful audition. Uh, it sent you oh, through to the Academy you. and it was judged and praised yes. by Paula Abdul, which for me, being more your mom's age, was really cool to see her give praise to you. Uh, so talk to us about yeah. that show. Was that a positive experience for you? It was honestly amazing. I mean, I have watched another show that I've watched since I was super young and obviously waiting until I was 18 to get on it. And then I found out they were doing the next gen and I was like, oh, wait, I can I can go quit now <laughs> today. Um, so it was it was a really amazing experience. And to be able to get all of the, you know, successful dancers that are my age, you know, kind of into one room was really empowering and really cool. Um, but it was all together, just an amazing experience and, um, kind of surreal because that set is just like so known and like standing on that stage and watching Nigel Lisko like talk to me yeah, was just like, wait, what is happening? And then Kat Dealey was a pr pretty big highlight of that experience. I love Kat Dealey, like love her so much <laughs> so um yeah honestly she was probably the person i was most excited to meet which sounds really bad but it's very true <laughs> it's not bad i just thought it would be paula abdul 
Oh, yeah. I mean, she's okay. She's really great. I love Paul Abdul. She's amazing. But is there's just something about Kat Dealey, and she's tall too. Okay. So we kind of have this thing, you know. Now, you know Maddie I mean? Ziegler, what, she was going to be a judge uh, if you had made it onto the next round, right? Right. Was that good? Yeah. Did you think that that could have been some conflict of interest? Um, I don't think conflict of interest. It would have just been really weird. It's like yeah. judging your friend. Um, yeah. I mean, I actually saw her because she was at the academy when I was there, and it was just a whole. It was just a different experience, you know, with her judging and stuff. But we hung out and got along really well, obviously. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. That would have been an, an interesting kind of thing. <laughs> well, you know, the fans were upset because the cameras never caught you two together on the show. I think they caught you in the same room, I know. but they never filmed we an were encounter. More so, like, right, like behind the scenes, kind of like in school, like hanging out or like <sighs> that kind of thing. But she was like kind of somewhat separate from the contestants which makes sense because she was a judge so exactly did you so but yeah that wasn't it wasn't awkward or anything like that like there wasn't anything oh no 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 behind the scenes that no, was, was uncomfortable good. okay no not at all on the show you talked about how you were kicked off the dance mom's dance team because you were too tall and you got really emotional about that um mm-hmm. being many years later does that still sting or are you past it and that's just something that happened yeah I mean honestly it doesn't anymore um being tall has been a difficult journey and I don't think people really realize um how difficult it really is because um you know not many people experience it and people do look at you know being tall as this amazing positive thing which I have learned it is but you know when you're so different and everybody is like constantly calm commenting on it and um you know it makes you very self-conscious especially growing up in the dance world when there's really not that many tall people um so it was something that i um have learned over um the past couple years and my mom has really helped but you know i wouldn't be who i am without being this way and i wouldn't have the opportunities i have been given you know through modeling or um you know the things that i've gotten because they were looking for tall people um without being the way I am. So, you know, it's definitely a gift and I am so thankful for it now. Um, But I mean, you know, getting kicked off the team for that reason was a little difficult because I am a perfectionist and I am always the person to want to fix it and want to be like, okay, now I'm ready. Like I got this and I can be on it now, but that was just something I really couldn't do anything about. So I think that's why that situation was so difficult. I'm sure that this is going to come up in the next uh, question I have here, but as our listeners know, we talk a lot about this topic. We, we, Elizabeth and I are huge advocates of stomping out bullying. We both have young children in school, yes. and it's a topic that comes up constantly. Uh, and you personally experienced mm-hmm. some bullying, especially on social media and by people you know. Yeah. Uh, so I always ask guests who have experienced that to talk a little bit about what its effect on you has been, how you have dealt with it, and uh, j- just speak about you know how horrible this is right yeah i mean bullying and um cyber bullying and body shaming and all of that it's really honestly a terrible thing and i know a lot of people say you know block out the haters and all this but honestly we are human beings we can't block out those comments we just physically can't as much as we try it still will you know get under our skin and be in the back of our minds and we will think about it it's just what we do so um I think how I approached it and how um, my mom and the people around me helped get through it um, was just being really supportive and being loving and, you know, just surrounding yourself with those kind of people. And also my biggest thing is um, self-love. I wrote a quote um, and it's kind of my thing. It's called, um, or it says self-love creates self-happiness. And I think that that is Mm. the most important thing. If you love yourself and you're happy with who you are and um, I, you know, you really just love yourself. I think that, you know, no matter what anybody else says, you will know that you are amazing and you will get through anything. So um, that would be my advice is to find love within yourself and find the things that you absolutely love about yourself because nobody can tell you differently then. Very true. I think that's really hard sometimes for some people, though, to find that, you know, because we're all unhappy with something that we've got going on, whether right. it's how we look or, right. or something about our personality that we're trying to change or, or whatever. But um, mm-hmm. self-love is sometimes tricky, but if you can find it, yeah, you're on your, on the way to. Exactly. And it, it, it takes some searching and it takes some people around you that kind of push you in the right direction. Um, but you know, just even when you wake up, just say one thing that you love about yourself or, you know, um, 
just really try to be the best person you can be because that really helps. Um, you know, you just find who you are and really just, I mean, not care what everybody else says, yeah. which is difficult. <laughs> Do you have other advice or anything else uh, for kids who are being bullied? on either how it Um, helped, you know, you coped with it or dealt with it? What can they do? Yeah, I mean, I I say just um, stay strong. I think one of the biggest things in bullying is a lot of people, um, the reason that they do it is because they are jealous or they want to get a rise out of you. So um, I think the biggest thing, if somebody is bullying you, then don't give them that satisfaction of them, um, you know, affecting you and don't let them see your tears or the, what it's making you feel, because that is just giving them what they want. So I think, you know, just really being strong and um, showing them that you're not going to take it and that that is not going to happen. Um, but obviously in situations, if it's physical or it's really mentally degrading, then please go to an adult or to your parents and really talk to them because I feel like so many kids um, are taking everything very internally now and they don't talk to anyone. So um my advice is definitely talk to people, whether it's your best friend or even your dog. I mean, it will help. Um, <laughs> right. It can make you so, feel better, um, for yeah. sure. Oh, for sure. Just, you know, finding a way to get it out. You know, I think my biggest thing was dancing and now songwriting. So just really find that outlet of where you can release those emotions, but not in front of the bully. Does some of these topics come up in your music? Oh, for sure. I yeah. mean, um, my music is... Um, very specific and I will have a video kind of coming about explaining um what what I wrote all these songs about but it's definitely um most of it is about one person um and the way that they affected me and the way that I got through um some hard times and so it's definitely very emotional and um but it honestly helped me so much through um what I was feeling and that kind of thing so yeah. Awesome. Well, you are wise beyond your years in this topic, and I thank you for sharing that those thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's talk about a recent project that you were a part of. You recently played Olivia Newton-John in a short film called This Is Me. So I was wondering if what, I did. What can you tell me about it? Where can we see it? Yes, you can find it um, on YouTube. The um, guy who created it, his name is Brandon Stewart, and he um, was the main vocalist and um kind of the brains and the artistic minds behind it all. Um, but he, you can find it on his um, YouTube channel. It's Brandon Stewart. Um, and it was an amazing video. We are going to have a lot coming out um, soon with his production company, Panoptic. Um, but it was such an amazing experience. I mean, being Olivia Newton-John was so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Um, and then we had like, Marilyn and David Bowie and all of these people it was it was great and it's really um an inspirational video behind it it's kind of having all of these you know icons and everything telling someone um you know just to be who they are and um kind of embrace that because he was a janitor and kind of down on himself and um it's just a really inspirational video I encourage everybody to go watch it it's Really, really awesome. So, and I'm glad that I got to be a part of it. On your IMDb page, you've got a beautiful solo dance piece of yourself, and it has kind of a vintage feel to it. At least that's how I felt. Uh, kind of wondering behind the scenes part of that. How many times did you perform that routine to get all the shots? Was it a one take, multi camera thing, or how many times did you do it? Yeah. So that one I actually did. Um, that was choreographed by David Bagley, but I did that before my recital, my, one of our last recitals. And I probably did that one, I think I did it three times. Okay. Um, yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't that crazy, but um, it was really cool. And um, it was probably one of my first solos that really was based on my movement quality and kind of my artistry. So it was a really, you know, more mature solo for me. Um, so that was really cool. And just being able to do... Um, that kind of like artistic piece was very different because I was so used to, you know, competition dance and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it was fun. Now, on Fan Counters, we love hearing about our guests talk about their experiences with their fans because we've all heard those stories where people will meet a celebrity and they'll have their version, but it's always, you know, that's the hook of Mm -hmm. our show is what's the celebrity's take on these fan experiences? So do you have any moments that with fans that you'll never forget? Well, okay, um, I... First of all, I just want to say, I still find it crazy that I have fans. Um, you know, being this small town girl from Michigan, it's, it's absolutely insane. Um, but I have always said that, 
you know, I started out as a fan first. And um, I remember seeing you girls for the first time and being like, oh, my God, can I get a picture or whatever um, a long time ago. Um, but I've always said that, you know, I will never turn down a picture because I was that girl. And I will always, you know, um, take time to talk to my fans because they are the people who get us where we are. But I have to say, probably one of my most memorable things with a fan, um, I was at a dance convention and this girl came up and she's like, hi, you know, I'm your fan, whatever. And she's like, I just have to ask you one question. And I was like, okay, you know, kind of getting ready for this. And she's like, so do you like mac and cheese? <laughs> That's like, the question. Oh, um, I do. Um, yeah, I do. And, and then she just walked away. I was like, oh. Okay, that was it was very interesting, but it, people are very creative with their questions that we can say that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Any creepy ones yeah. or, or kind of weird uh, mac and cheese is kind of weird, but ooh. anything else? I mean, I've, I've had I've had a couple um like older guys come up and say they were fans, which is fine. It was just interesting. But I think that one of the coolest things is, is that a lot of um a lot of my fans are actually tall also. Um, so that's kind of cool seeing that I have an impact on, you know, the tall girls community. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of cool that we can relate on that level. Um, yeah, but I've met some really awesome people and, um, some of my fans I, um, have become friends with and talk on a daily basis. There's Snapchat all the time too. So it's kind of cool. Now, do they really give you, do you, do you get gifts from your fans? Um, I have gotten, um, like a couple like fan letters or notes or that kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't say like full on gifts, but um, definitely some really sweet letters. <laughs> Very nice. Well, we also have to talk about yeah. your sushi obsession. I would love to know when that started. Oh my God. Um, I pretty much probably from birth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love sushi so much. I don't even know. Um, which is funny because I grew up in Michigan. So like we don't have an ocean any anywhere close right but um yeah there was I don't know honestly when it started my my whole family we have like um super good palates and love everything and um my parents were always really good at taking me to you know restaurants and really introducing me to different exotic foods from all over the world um but sushi was the one that I was like yep that's my thing and I found a sushi restaurant here in LA that is my favorite restaurant of all time it's so good give a shout out which one is and, it okay well it's called sushi yuzu right but i've also seen justin timberlake eat there see that's another reason to mention right the name yeah. and i was like okay see my sushi restaurant is the best justin timberlake says so too absolutely so you're welcome yeah so what's your go-to see, my order sushi expertise is great <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your go-to what order go-to? yeah um Okay, well, they have this um, truffle garlic edamame, which is insanely amazing. And then my favorite roll is their um, spicy tuna baked crab roll. Hmm. I am not a sushi fan, but I appreciate the suggestion. You're not? (laughs) No. Oh, why, thank you. You're like, ooh, that sounds terrible. (laughs) Raw fish? I don't even like cooked fish. Oh, come on. I know. I have a bad palate. I don't have the palate you do. It's, you know. Oh, well, that's okay. I can help. All if you right. come out to L.A., I'd be like, no. yo, wait, are you from L.A.? I don't even no, know. No, we're in Milwaukee. Yeah. Oh, right. So I we're closer to that. your hometown than your new town. Right, yeah. <laughs> yep. So speaking but of... But if you do come out, I will help you. Awesome. I'll hit you up. <laughs> uh, speaking of favorite restaurants, give us a favorite restaurant back home in Michigan. And maybe your well, we talked about the sushi one, but a different one in L.A. Okay, my favorite restaurant in Michigan. Um, I'd probably say it's it's called The Laundry. Um, Doesn't sound like a restaurant, but go ahead. No, but it's literally amazing. The best food in Michigan. So good. Or I don't know in Michigan, but my favorite. (laughs) Right, it's your favorite, Um, yeah. (laughs) Right, um, yeah, no, I love it. And it's just like really fresh, really good food. And they have everything from like sandwiches to like. I don't know anything in the best desserts ever. Okay. So, yeah. And how about that your LA restaurant? And then LA. Oh, that's difficult. There's so much good food out here. Um, well, can I say my house? My mom is an your amazing a cook. cook. My mom and I cook all the time. We love to cook. So I honestly, my favorite restaurant here is my house. So you'd rather eat yeah. in than go out. 
I would, honestly. My honestly, I mean, my mom is such a good cook that sometimes I go other places and I'm like, wow, she just could have made this so much better. So, <laughs> oh, that's um, and I really enjoy like being in the kitchen with her and cooking and baking and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. Got a couple of fun questions before we end for this uh, this segment. What's on your DVR? What are you watching right now? Oh, I just started Big Little Lies. So, do you know? I don't Big know Little that Lies one. No. HBO. Oh, okay. No, um, see, I don't have so, HBO, but yeah. I'm gonna write that down to check it's it out. It's with um, Nicole Kidman, um, Reese Witherspoon, and Shailene Woodley. They're the three main. Um, so I j- literally just started. It. I'm only on like episode three. But okay, really that's an so awesome far. cast. Yeah, right? I know. And then they all have won um, Emmys, I believe that would be, right? They have won what? I think think Nicole Kidman won an Emmy for Oh, an Emmy. Okay, wow. Then I definitely, I'm going to have to check the show out. Right? No, they're amazing. But um, also, I need to watch season two of Riverdale. That's my next step. Stranger Things, are you on that show as well? Oh, of course. Of course. I binge watch it like the first week it came out <laughs> so good it i is. love millie she's just like the cutest thing ever yeah it took me a while to get to season two just because of schedules and stuff but finally i got it watched right. but I, you know that was one where I, I gotta do it i gotta do it and then uh, blown yeah. away it was like almost better than the first season it started out oh, slow I, know. I don't know how they do that it did but the ending, I'm like, wow, this is happening right now. It's so good. And and those kids are such amazing actors. It's it's insane, really. It's unbelievable. Sometimes you get these shows and you've never heard of the people and they're the best actors ever. It's awesome. Right? Yeah. I, I love that when they discover new people and kind of do that whole thing. But I also love my staples, you know. <laughs> Definitely. Now, have you been to the theater to see either Solo or the new Jurassic World movie? Okay, see, this is in the talks for this week. Oh, okay. Because I totally need to go. Um, literally, my mom's boyfriend, Jason, um, was just saying it, that we need to go watch Jurassic World. I'm so excited for Jurassic World. And Solo is the first Star Wars that I haven't seen in theaters. Okay. So far, have you seen it? Uh, I have not seen Solo. Uh, I want to. It's a, uh, like you. It's the first one that I haven't seen in theaters yet. Right. Uh, it's still out there. So maybe maybe this week it, that could happen. Yeah. But I did see Jurassic mm-hmm. World because I would not miss it on opening night. Um, oh. But I don't know if you want me to give any uh, details. No, I actually don't. But um, <laughs> thanks. No, but I really want to see it. And I'm so mad. I haven't even seen Incredibles yet. Like, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with you? I took my kids to see that, like, right away. See, I know. I just, I don't know. I haven't made it to to the theater yet. And it's not like it's, like, expensive or anything because I have a movie pass, which is the best thing that's ever happened to movie theaters, by the way. Do you have a movie pass? Uh, You know, I don't, but we have a theater here that does $5 Tuesdays and free popcorn. Oh. So Tuesday is just my my movie day. We'll go every Tuesday. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I like it. Well, Jurassic World was good. You're going to like it. Okay, I'm sure I will. A little surprise for it, but yeah, it's it's good. Yay. All right, music. Yes, that's That's happening this week. Good deal. Uh, Let's talk about music. What artist can't you get enough of right now? Um, well... Uh, Sean Mendez, mm-hmm. Julia, uh, Julie Michaels, of course. Um, I love, is it Billy Eilish? Billy Eilish? Don't really know how to say it. I'm not sure. Um, Halsey, those kind of, they're really killing it right now. Um, yeah. I actually saw Sean Mendez at my gym like a couple weeks ago. I oh was my like, gosh. what is happening? Did oh you geek God. out yeah, or kind of did you not even um, say anything? N- no, I was just really taken off guard. And no, we did say like hi to each other, which was cool. But um, I was just really taken off guard. I was like, why is Sean Mendez in my gym right now? But he was. <laughs> That's awesome. And he worked out. So I was like, oh, okay. Well, there we go. Have you ever been starstruck <laughs> before? Oh, yes. Um, I think I think it's really when I'm just like majorly caught caught off guard i was actually on the carpet at a people's choice one time and i was like taking pictures whatever and i just hear john people are like yelling john john and i was like oh okay so i turn over and it's john stamos oh wow i was like oh okay and then like to the right of me i have like fifth harmony and victoria justice and then i walk in um like to the room and the person is sitting right in front of me oh my god did i literally just forget him? tom hanks oh, sitting wow. right in front of me 
And I was like, okay, this is literally like a legend. And then like the rock was there and all of this. It was just, it was crazy. So it was kind of a speechless just taking in the moment kind of thing. <laughs> there is something about seeing these people on movies and television your whole life and then actually running into them in real life. And I had that moment. Right? You're uh, like, oh my gosh, you're an actual person. Like, right. No, oh, like wow. right in front okay. of me. Like, what do you look like <laughs> right up close? And that's kind of the moment I right? had. I went to Last Man Standing, a taping of that, just, just to see Tim Allen. Uh, and to see him in real life, it was like, oh my God, you you do exist. And right? he was super cool with the fans and, and all of that. So he he impressed me big time. Oh, that's awesome. Don't you love that when you like meet them or like have some sort of, you know, communication with them and they're actually like super nice people? Because I've had a couple people to where I'm like, ooh, they were kind of rude. And then it kind of just ruined the whole, you know, so always be nice and be good people. <laughs> exactly. And I've had one like that, too. In fact, I started to tell it on an episode and Elizabeth was like, do you really want to go that negative? And I was like, OK, no. And then we cut it out and I didn't ever tell anybody who right. it was. But uh, yeah, it, it totally <laughs> ruins watching them or listening to them in the future. It does. And it's sad. Like, I don't want it to, but it really does. Like, I, um, one of the people that I absolutely loved when I met them was Lucy Hale. And we had, like, a conversation and literally one of the sweetest people in the entire world. And now I want to watch everything with her. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. do you, I think that that Here's kind a of, trivia question for you, Ava. Do you know where Lucy yes. Hale's beginning came from? No, I you don't. You don't? Well, no, let me tell I? you. Uh, back around. Pretty Little Liars? What? No, way earlier than that. Like, no. she, when she was 10 or 11? The first oh time she was ever on television was an American Idol spinoff called American Juniors. And she was Wait, really? on that show and made it to, they were making a band. So they were like getting 20 kids down to five or something like that. And so she was one of the members in that group. And uh, yeah, that was Lucy Hale's early beginning. Because I went to a taping of that too, that's but way hilarious. back in the day. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yep. I did not know that. Yeah, you should now YouTube, and I don't know if there's anything on YouTube for American Juniors, but yeah, check that out. Yes, I will, for sure. You do do your research. (laughs) Very thoroughly. (laughs) I might not always have dates correct, but look, I know stuff about you that you might not know. There you go. Oh. No, I don't. Probably not. Probably not. (laughs) Uh, Summer is here, uh, so we'd love to hear what your plans are, and if you're taking any vacations, if you've done it already, or if you're going on, on one. Um, yeah, I mean, I just had a little, like, weekend mini vacation in Palm Springs, which was nice. Um, but honestly, I mean, I graduated high school this past year, um, two years early, so that's kind of crazy. That's really I, I wasn't crazy. expecting it. Um, so now I just, you know, am just not having school because I have done, the reason I'm done so early is because I have done school all year round for a couple years. Okay. Um, so now I literally have, like, time off and I'm just, playing with my puppies and going and taking classes and it's it's really great it's amazing (laughs) so will you start college in the fall i i believe so i I think i'm just gonna do um, my basics at an online community college and then kind of figure out the rest from there excellent very good yeah and what other projects might be coming up for you Uh, we did mention the music we got to be looking out for that Mm -hmm. you've got a spoken of project with nia um but anything else you can tell us about or you want to promote here? Um, I mean, yeah, I have um, my movement that I just started. I don't know if you're aware of that. Oh, um, do tell. But I started a movement on YouTube, and it's um, kind of from 13 Reasons Why. That's where the idea came from. And it's um, 13 Reasons for Me or 13 Reasons of Love. That's kind of the challenge that I started. So it, um, what you have to do is you just write down 13 reasons you love your life and you love yourself and make a little video of it. And then post it on social media and use those hashtags. Um, So it's really just a movement to help spread love and um, to get people to think about the positive things in their life and not always dwell on the negative things that are happening or the negative people. Um, So I'm really hoping that people can start participating in it and posting their videos because I am going to be reposting them. And I've already seen a couple and um, it's really amazing. So Um, If they do want more information on that, they can go to my YouTube channel, which is Ava Michelle, um, and they can go check that out. So um, I have my informational video that they can watch um, and share, and then I have my own challenge that I did that they can kind of see how to do it. So, yeah, that's been really exciting. 
What's the hashtag? It's 13 Reasons of Love. There's two. So it's 13 Reasons of Love and 13 Reasons for Me, and it's the number four. Okay, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, we'll yeah. link that in the episode uh, description so that people can check that out. Perfect. Thank you. And where can we find you on social media? You On Instagram, you can find me at a- ava.michelle, which is ava.shell. On Twitter, you can find me at Ava Michelle 2002 um, On YouTube, it's Ava Michelle. Let me think. What else is there? I believe on Facebook, it's like Ava Michelle Coda Official or Ava Michelle Official. Haven't looked on Facebook in a while, so <laughs> okay. I wouldn't know. Um, you know, because they have the thing where you like post from Instagram and you hit Facebook and Twitter, so you don't really go on it that much right. anymore. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Great. Musically, I think I'm Ava Michelle 2002 or 02, something like that. Oh, and Snapchat is Ava Michelle underscore zero two. Now I have a question about that Snapchat, with especially with celebrities. Uh, do you, mm-hmm. when you're snapping, are you sending it to all these random fans that are subscribing to you, or I mean, what are you actually um, sending to the fans? Well, actually, the fans, we don't really have any communication. Um, but if I do post something on my story, they can view it. Okay. Um, the only way that, yeah, the only way that I could actually snap someone back or they could snap me is if I add them back as a friend. Um, but they can add me, and then they can view all my public stories and all that stuff. Um, but I have added quite a few fans back, and we have streaks and all that fun stuff. So <laughs> Very cool. Uh, well, Ava, it's yeah. been a great hour. I really appreciate you joining us and being on the show this yeah, week. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, and if you've got Thank other you things. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, definitely. Great. If you ever want to come back and you got other things to promote, we'd love to have you back. For sure. Let's do it. My thanks to Ava for being on the program today. What a great time. Uh, next week on the show, don't miss Lexi DiBendetto. She is on the hit Nickelodeon series Night Squad. You might also know her from Grey's Anatomy. She's also been in other many roles, which we'll tell you about next week. But we hope you tune in to hear Lexi and all of her stories next week. Uh, well, you can find us on social media. We're all over the place. Our biggest group is on Facebook. That's where we communicate with most of our fans most often. And you can find us there at facebook.com forward slash fan counters. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter. You can search for us using the name Fan Counters Live, and we hope that you communicate with us there. And also, if there's a guest you want us to have on the show, we love hearing your suggestions. We've used them already. Can you believe that? Uh, Email us who you want to hear on the show at hello at fancounters.com. That's going to do it for this week. Don't miss next week's episode with Lexi DiBendetto of Nickelodeon's Night Squad. And we'll do that next week. This was a podcast from the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com.